What's up, Dum Dum? Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Ill Informant Podcast. Uh, I'm Elliot, and I'm here with Nash and Darren, and uh, we got another great podcast coming your way. Why'd you say my name like that? You really dug in there. Uh, I'm I'm liking you less and less with each episode. <laughs> I knew this would happen. This always happens. <laughs> no, I'm just Either kidding. die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. <laughs> I'm kind of wanted to start doing this podcast with Cool Nash instead. But, is, um, I don't, is there a Cool Nash? I don't, I don't have any I don't sunglasses. Have elusive. What about like academic Nash? Uh, oh, shit. This is uh, it's like your um, Superman. And this is yeah, let's, <clears throat> yeah where, did, where did Nash go? I got a book. It's got, so, oh, that's good. Because I'm, cause I'm smart. You, <laughs> I watched Army of the Dead. Let's just get into it, okay? okay. I watched Army of the Dead. What it's is Army of the movie. Dead? <laughs> that was a serious question. I was, des- I was describing it. I, okay. Like you don't have to. But what is it? A movie? Go. What, is yeah. it a movie though? <laughs> what is this? Is it a moving picture? Um, it's Darren, it's a zombie are you one movie. Of the guys, when you go to pay oh, at a God. till, you're surprised that there's a there's a debit machine. <laughs> I, I work with old Whoa. people. And I, who are addic- clearly addicted to opioids, and I slide the debit machine over, and they go, oh, and they pull out their car, <laughs> and they like stick it in, and then they're like, oh, right, a pin. And then, <laughs> oh, it says remove. Okay. I just, then like, I just okay. complain about the price of apples. Apples? How? Oh, two dollars and fifty cents for those apples. I remember back in my day. Yeah, we can. didn't even have apples. Um. In the 18, did they have apples in the 1850s, Darren? No apples. No, it was just, uh, we just ate sponge sugar. That was our fairground treat. <laughs> we said carrots on a stick. That was our, uh, you want, like a, would Bob you like a carrots. long popsicle? <laughs> Carrot on a stick. There you go. <laughs> and it was just minus 30 out, so it was already frozen. Frozen. Sorry, I derailed, I derailed you. Uh, uh, Army of the Dead is a zombie movie on Netflix, okay? It's, Army uh, of the Dead, that's Sydney. Were we uh, supposed to Army of the Dead out here? Okay, go on. Sorry. Were we supposed to watch it? Because I didn't watch it. No. Is that what you meant by like? Oh, okay. All right. You don't have to watch it. I just want to talk about one thing in the movie, and then you guys just like you could not interrupt me for like ten seconds, <laughs> so I can okay. get to it. It's a conversation, Elliot. We're talking. I don't like conversations where other people talk. Okay. This isn't <laughs> just some soapbox <laughs> where you can spew some. <laughs> hate some angle on <laughs> army of the dead okay fire away okay i'm ready just a zombie movie on netflix okay it's like a bank heist m- meets zombies okay that's the whole movie darren netflix is a streaming service streaming is where you take a movie online uh, i love a good streaming just you know <laughs> there at the side of the stream oh Fishing. Fishing with carrots. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the days of old before your prostate was inflamed. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of streaming. Uh... And, um, the director, he... A bunch of the shots are so, like, blurry. Like, the, mm-hmm. the characters in focus and then everything else is, like, so incredibly blurry. And it's kind of off-putting. It... Like, major bouquet. So this is... I've never seen... I don't know understand that technical term bouquet but um, not bouquet okay okay what, okay like, okay it just means the blurry background like my background's uh, blurry okay. over here that's bouquet but it was so blurry that it was like pixelated so it's like pixelated all around them except for the person's face and it's like, why, do I, why do i feel that uh la just learned what bouquet was and then decided to talk about it so is this just? I've, learned, I've known about it for several weeks. Because they did digitally insert Tig into it. Is, is no, it's that, all the characters. It's all the characters. Is it it's all like green the whole screen? movie? No, it's yeah. not green screen. They just, Tig. just turned up the. Yeah, it's a choice. Um, but it, focal is, length of the camera, I guess. This is Jack Zack Snyder, right? Yeah. And he's everyone made a big deal about his Justice League or something. I don't. Oh, Jesus Christ, Darren. We don't have time for this. This is a 45-minute <laughs> podcast. We can't catch you up on, on the Zack Snyder stuff, okay? Yeah, he's a, he's, oh, a big, he's a big deal director right now. Yeah, I don't, under, I don't... Justice League was a terrible movie, wasn't it? And the Zack Snyder cut was worse? <laughs> Pretty much. 
he turned a two and a half hour bad movie into a three hour decent movie. Four hour. It's four hours. Four hour decent movie. That's yeah, too it's... much Justice League. I don't. I don't care about Superman at all yeah. that long. Yeah, it's true. Uh, would you so... recommend watching this? Whatever Dawn of the Dead. It was was it supposed to uh, signify the isolation of all the characters within? Put your glasses apocalypse? on when you say shit like that, please. I think he just wanted to be a Michael Bay ripoff. I don't know. What well, do you think it was supposed to? Do? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, Are you here to give a speech. Um, no, this is your I... speech platform. I won't interrupt, Elliot. You go ahead. You say what you gotta say. <laughs> So I just it, think it took it you out of the a, film is what you're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're trying to be fancy pantsy. And it's like, we're regular filming is good. We don't need to like doll it up. It's like when Peter Jackson did the, the 60 frames per second for the Hobbit. Remember when he did that? And it was, yeah, and it looked terrible. It looked terrible. Nobody liked it. Cause it's interesting how we're so used to these parameters that are actually unrealistic, but we're just so used to that in that particular medium. Is it, what you, is it? Is it normally like 12 frames a second? Usually 24 frames per second. But if you double it up, it makes everything look smoother. And because um, there's a there's a there's a there's a standardized blur that everybody's um, used to with you know 24 frames per second yeah. in all film. So when you speed it up, so when somebody does something really quick, you don't. There's no. See, I'm really quick, so you can barely see that. But <laughs> but there is a blur there. <laughs> How many frames a second are you moving at right now, Nash? 24. No, I don't, I don't actually know what this is set at. I'm sure 24. He's like, 180 frames but a second. But it's so fast. <laughs> See. Um, why, why are they... I haven't seen it. me sweaty. Oh. I'm now sweating. How do you guys know that? <laughs> I take Most exercise off. you've had the whole pandemic. <laughs> the, why are they still making zombie shows and movies? They're pretty fun. They're pretty fun. I like them. It's just I think if- he, he had this idea 10 years ago after he did that Army of the, or the other Dawn of the Dead he did. This was mm-hmm. his idea 10, 15 years ago. I thought these were all George Romero movies already. Uh, Dawn of the Dead was a remake of a George Romero movie. Okay. And then this is a, a spinoff. I don't know. It was a fun movie. I like zombie movies. Um I just wish that they didn't blur out the background so much because yeah. I don't want them to choose where I look. Don't don't fucking choose where I look. I want to look where I look. OK, if I want to look at the, what's on the background wall. Oh, there's a picture there. OK, I want to see that. I want to see the picture. I don't want to like I think you, I think the problem is I think you're always I don't think you get that choice at all in movies. They're always telling you where to look, but they're just doing it in a more subtle way that you don't notice. OK, then do it subtly. I don't want this. Like, <laughs> You don't want to be spoon fed your where to looking. Yeah, I don't want to be. I want the freedom, freedom of choice. He wants to be talking, my, and eating that spoon. It's my screen. I should be able to do whatever I want with it. Mm. I don't you. know. I think I, I, I like the. Uh, I will watch this. I did watch Twenty Eight Days Later this week, which is great movie, an excellent movie, and uh, Cillian Murphy is a, a dime. That's for sure. Um, you seen a picture of him as a female? Like I would totally bang him. No, I see a picture of him as a dude, and I would totally bang him. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Darren on this one. Um, the... I would see him as a picture as a as a, a horse, and I would. <laughs> <laughs> that horse is such pretty hair. Um, Blue eyes. I just think I just think the whole zombie thing is like it's it's kind of played out. I understand like it's just about having people in an apocalypse, right? Like. That's all it is. It's just like, here's your survival scenario. But can we use something else besides zombies to put people well, in that? The only alternative right now is like vampires, and vampires are way worse. Like, I would way rather watch any zombie movie over a vampire like, movie. Like, way more scary for you, or just worse is in a terrible premise? Vampire movies don't do anything for me. It's like, oh, like, I don't know. Do you guys ever see the correlation between. Uh... I saw this article one time about how whenever there's a Republican president in, zombie movies are big, and when it's a Democratic president, vampire movies are big. Did you did Smart Nass just make that up? <laughs> no, <laughs> he did a study while we were talking. <laughs> really? That sounds uh, that sounds amazing. I don't know if, if it's like how 
solid it is, but in the eighties that's kind of where George Romero, all that stuff was in then like I don't know. Fucking Google it. All right, never mind. Keep whatever the fuck. Well, that's interesting. Is that because do you think it's correlated or just like it just it just happened that way? Like there's a cycle, there's an eight year cycle between vampire and zombies, and they're they're constantly going back and forth. That might be the case. Yeah. Or who's taking the narrative? Like who has control? So if there's a Republican president in, is it is it all We're the all, all the, who's taking control of the narrative? Is it the Republicans like the zombies or Democrats like the vampires more, or is it? Well, the main, you know, all the, you know, the mainstream media is definitely left leaning. So maybe when Republicans are in power, they maybe they push this gloom and doom, you know. And then when they, when then their side's in power, then it's uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I am joking. Sexy but, vampires. Oh yeah. yeah. We're going to live forever, <laughs> and we're gonna have zero body fat and kiss let's, each other. Let's on the suck neck. all the blood. Let's suck all the blood of young of young people. Oh yeah. Yeah, we are German Republican Americans. <laughs> Vampires. <laughs> Vampires. We live a thousand years, but we still have this German accent. I want to suck your blood, but then go dancing. <laughs> D- dancing is night, of course. No daytime dancing, because I have to sleep. Sleep with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when was the last vampire movie that you enjoyed? I, I don't I'm gonna say this right now this may be controversial but um the best cinema experience theater going experience I've ever had was watching Twilight all the Twilight oh. movies in the theater have you ever seen those movies oh can you take off the glasses <laughs> yeah <laughs> those movies are uh actually they're dog they're, shit they're I, they're fine but they're just fine uh, to be that to be that to be your pinnacle cinematic I'm not, experience. I didn't, say, I didn't say I did not. Oh, say don't backpedal movie. now! No I, backpedaling. You said you love. Is it? Is because because the audience was so into it? Yeah. If you will play that back, I did say I did not say cinematic experience. I said theater going we're not, cinema we're experience. Not gonna, we're not going to play that back. <laughs> the, because yes, he, because why? of the audience. Basically, because I was there with uh, you know the wifey and. Uh, and everybody else was there with their partner. So all of the girls were there for the movie and all the guys were there because of the girls. So Let's there was see. this possibly. And then, and then, and then, uh, so just all the guys were just laughing. It was just really funny. Cause you'd laugh at, you know, all the really bad parts. So there's half the audience there that hated the movie and were there <laughs> watching it because they didn't want to. And that then the other watch. half was there. It was very fun. The, uh, so it was like a, a Rocky Horror Picture Show kind of experience. Yeah, I just remember laughing so hard, and then everybody else started laughing, and, and then the was... ladies getting mad at the <laughs> shut up. And then we watched amazing. Fifty Shades of Grey, thinking it was going to be a similar experience, and it was the most awkward cinema experience ever because there was oh, yeah. it was me, Kate, and then like six other gr- women <laughs> in the spread out through the audience in kind of pairs. And then it was dead silent through the whole movie until the sex scene started. And then everybody started chatting because I think they were uncomfortable. It was so <laughs> awkward. I've never had that word. It just flipped. As soon as the intimate stuff started happening, everybody just started. Like, I had to shush people. I was like, shut up. You're like, I look like a creep. I'm enjoying this. I'm trying to. I'm trying to, I'm trying to finger my wife over here. Sorry. Um, did they, no they didn't even know. finish they didn't even finish making all those books into no. movies, right? No, because they, they kind of yeah, like they gave up. They, yeah, did. they did. Yeah, they did. Okay. I I have like, video. Like, like divergent, they get they they gave up on divergent, didn't they? They did. They tried to do a, a direct to TV and then I think the star, she was like, I'm not doing that if that's yeah. what's happening. <laughs> they gave up on, on Narnia and they gave up on Divergent. They're just like that, that'd be so sad if your book, you wrote a book, you have like seven books. They make the first one; it's a success. They make the second one and just flop. But you can wash yeah. your hands of that at least. You could be like, "I published an amazing series for these kids. It's huge, and you guys fucked it up. It's not on me." <laughs> yeah, they get paid, I think, beforehand. So yeah, I think it's pretty unless it's really worked into the. I think J.K. Rowling does get a cut of the movies. That's right. J.K. Rowling is she is so rich. the richest, the, yeah, the richest author of all time ever. Mm uh it's insane she's so rich she can be against trans <laughs> it doesn't even affect her yeah 
She's, uh... Is she even richer than William Shakespeare? I know he's. I know he's still not alive. Darren, I haven't been on this earth. I haven't been on this earth very long. I'm just gonna say I, ha I don't have. I haven't heard a lot of things, but that I can say is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's uh, Shakespeare. Think of all the movies that the Shakespeare's okay. Have so if Shakespeare, films and if Shakespeare was alive today, he's a vampire. How much money would he vampire have? Vampire zombie. I don't think okay. you get any money for if all your shit's in public domain. No, but no, let's say it is, wasn't in public domain. Let's say the Shakespeare estate. They own everything, don't they? His great grandchildren. After like a hundred years, I think after a hundred. And they after a hundred years, travel around. I think they're, I think they're I DJs them. in Ibiza, and. Uh, <laughs> And to they be just not live to off be. that sweet money. <laughs> to be, to be, to be, to be. <laughs> not to be. <laughs> That's one of their hits. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they must. He, he, if he was alive today, I mean, besides the fact his, his JK grandchildren Rowling. have all the money, they, he would blow them out of the water because he would have so much fucking money. Be mm -hmm. unreal. He would be, he would be. Him and Elon Musk would be together uh, shooting off whatever flamethrowers on Rogan. I don't think you're even close to right. J.K. Rowling has would have like a million times more money than him. There's no way he's he, had, written... he had one. He had one good like Leonardo DiCaprio movie. That's the only one that anybody watched. <laughs> that was the <laughs> only good Shakespeare thing I've ever seen. What about His plays are loves... overrated. They're so boring. I would. Do you know how to bore a bunch of teenagers? You give them a Shakespeare play. It's garbage. Play. It's garbage. It's like, oh yeah, we, let's revere. <laughs> let's See? revere this this writer when he has boring <laughs> plays. They're old think... plays, and they were good when they were came out because they're the only ones. Look, when you're the only writer, uh, you're the only person who can write in the entire country. Of course, what you write is going to be entertaining. He made up words. <coughs> I don't know what they were, but I know Nash. that he made most of the words. Nash, where are you? Webcam utility. It's <laughs> in beta, that's why. Uh, Nash has always been in beta. This podcast is in beta. Um, but pick, uh, have, sorry, you, have you ever seen a Shakespeare play and actually enjoyed it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It was not. It was eighteen fifty, and I was it's, at the uh, theater. No, it was a. Uh, I remember going to. I took a trip in grade twelve, Ashland, Oregon, where they have a huge Shakespeare festival. Watched Oth Othello in a replica of the Globe Theater from England, and oh, uh, and it was awesome. And then even like we even got weed, like because this was back in the nineties. So uh, one of the guys on the class trip smuggled down some weed over the border. We got stoned and and went and watched Shakespeare. It was awesome. Well, you couldn't even watch it unstoned. That's how bad Shakespeare is. <laughs> That's like when you go see the movie Green Lantern. Let's. <laughs> or let's you go see. Uh... Don't deny the the enhancement capabilities of marijuana, Elliot. I for think, anything. For anything. I think people. I think people have been overrating old shit. I'm tired of it. Old shit isn't good just because it's old. Yeah, I think Darren's a good. Uh, where where did you evidence go? of that? <laughs> my battery died, so I had to oh, change my battery. Okay. Yeah, but I heard everything, and it was um, <laughs> groundbreaking. Yeah, it was. That's my take. You guys can you can like your Shakespeare. Oh yeah, he's fantastic. He he such he gave it to the king, King Henry the Fifth. He gave it to him. I think Shakespeare had, I mean, that's what they teach in schools. I show my kids. Um, yeah, I'm not a sheep. I'm not a sheep in school. I don't care what they say. They also, my like, school also said the Bible was real. Give me the army of the dead. You're like, Zack Snyder, army of the dead. That's what, it, that's no, trash, trash. If you took army of the dead and brought that back to Shakespeare's time. Yes. Do you know how mind blowing that would be? They would have no idea you think, what was going on. Do you think they would enjoy Shakespeare after they watched Army of the Dead at the Globe? You put yeah, that shit on there, they would freak out. 
they would start burning people. <laughs> it, it would be a. Yeah, I think this, it'd be like I think it'd really frighten everybody because yeah. they would they would think it was real. Yeah, that, it, yeah, but but when you see a Shakespeare play, you don't think that's real. You think they're playing. Point made. <laughs> yeah, you really got us there, Elliot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for shining that light on that dark, dark spot. <laughs> They'd have no. Good thing I got my camera working for that. <laughs> They just have no context. Like everything has to be, like everything has to be. It's in a, it's in a cultural. Oh, this is gonna get. Maybe I should. Darren, it's a cultural do conversation. First, do you remember when they first made that train movie and you, you got freaked out yes. in the theater? Oh, it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's coming right at us. I do remember that, but also, how did they mistake black? Like. Because people still saw in color back then. So how did they mistake the black and white for a thing that was real? Okay, remember before when I said that the stupidest thing <laughs> you've ever, ever heard? I don't understand that question. Like, how did they... Like, it was why, so, it like, such a gripping film that they got immersed in it. Black and white or not black and white. That's I what I mean. It's like, I don't how see do you, color, so I don't know what... How do you, <laughs> yeah, like, I only see black and white. How did they turn from there and go, oh, this is real when it's in black and white, and then look beside them, everything is in color, and they're like, no, this is real. There's a train. It's not. Because your brain doesn't really matter. Your brain, I don't like, mean you, like. If you, if you, if you um, hang upside down, mm -hmm. like put your head upside down so the world's upside down, eventually your brain will turn the world so that looks right. Is that the same thing like with VR where people talk about if you if you you do VR and then you've got some weird um, fucked up appendages after a while you start to imagine their your appendages are real like that like if you've got uh, lobster claws or extra hands a or big got dick giant, <laughs> giant, I wasn't gonna say but obviously a giant dong These I'll are take the forums that, that Darren's on on the internet <laughs> dude it feels real after a while. <laughs> They're just doing dishes with VR with a big dong swinging around. <laughs> just doing the exact same things he's doing in real life, just with a giant dick. Yeah. Moving just taking out the garbage on, with on a his, giant dick. On the dick. wheels. Just, moving it actually... across his kitchen. <laughs> it feels real, honey. It feels real. <laughs> I just hang weights from it. So it feels so from my from my regular normal size average. Like a like a weight vest, a weighted vest for your dick. <laughs> I saw Doesn't a porn that... the other day that had like a a sheath on it, like you could get, get like a deep dick sheath with like ribbed, and I'm like, I don't know if I want that because then like when you 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 have to wear that forever, right? Like a you like can't... with a little vest, like a little like like with a little no. zipper. It um like a corset, <laughs> like a corset, yeah, sure, like a corset, but it's just to enlarge and to make it more like um uh textile. Textured. Oh yeah, yeah, textured. Uh. It made your dick look like a sea cucumber, though. <laughs> what do you wear um, this for? Is this a condom or something? Or just no, it's like a sex a... toy. Oh. Do you know what a sex toy is? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cucumber. Oh. <laughs> I'm very conservative. Uh, this is... <clears throat> Can we keep this uh, family friendly? <laughs> but I'm just, I was just thinking, like, you could, you could never have regular sex after that. Like, that's it. You're committing to that for the rest of your life. Yeah, once you open that bottle, maybe. Uh, I'm sure you, yeah. Mm -hmm. How could you go back? Your wife, your wife was like, she enjoyed yeah, that so well. <laughs> and then you're like, you, you're back to the, the regular old dick. It's like if you like, yeah. I don't know. That's why you can't eat at a fancy restaurant. You can't eat above your, your, your money class. That's true. You One eat, time... One time I had some eggs at this restaurant place and they were the most amazing eggs I have ever had. And I could not believe that eggs could be cooked like that. And now every time I have eggs, I'm I'm really disappointed. Whether I cook them or somebody else cooks them, I don't know what. <laughs> they were so cloudy, beautiful and puffy and, and a little wet. And it was the most amazing experience I've ever had eating eggs. And I was furious while I was eating them. I'm like, eggs can be like this? I'll pay $14 <laughs> for these eggs. Where then I got you... home. 
where did you have the like were they a scrambled egg or what i want more a, a scrambled egg yeah but mm-hmm. like a toffee like a toffee egg no they were just they were just cooked I, i've watched perfectly. i've watched video i've watched videos on this and you yeah. have to there's like different there's different modes there's one chef who he he turns it up to the highest temperature and you just co- constantly stir it like mm-hmm. you just stir it until it turns to like a custard or there's yeah. like Jamie Oliver, he'll like add butter at the beginning. And then as he's cooking it, he'll keep stirring it the whole time. And as he's stirring, he adds a little bit more butter as he goes. And then just just before it, it's done cooking, he had a little pinch of salt and it finishes the cooking. And he takes it off before it's done. And it's eggs, like, it's supposed to be, eggs yeah. with Elliot. That's our next podcast. <laughs> the uh, But that is true. It's like rich. It's rich person uh, eggs. They're like toffee. And I think, yeah, you just stir them all the time. And it is like, a, is it like a custard? It was just really light and a little wet. And um, you mean think- you don't like your your scrambled eggs dry and burnt like they serve them in IHOP? <laughs> I like to I like to wince when I eat my eggs. Yeah. <laughs> or the fairies where they have the powdered stuff that they just rehydrate. Oh my oh, god. Is best. that what they do? Yeah. That's rehydrated eggs on the fairy. On the beastie fairies. And it disappoints me that. every time. They have a big grill. That is that's no, slanderous. That's why whenever you go there, whenever you get eggs on the ferry, always ask for fried eggs. Fried eggs are fresh. The scrambled are not. They're just a giant bag, just is yeah. there anything wrong with that? Because we're back it to the chicken, bad. The chicken bad. bagged thing. <clears throat> I don't even you know, think they're reconstituted, but I do think they're like a frozen, <laughs> a frozen egg, a bag of eggs. I have a friend who cooked on the fairies, and we could probably settle this. They will no. The the fairy cabal will assassinate them if they, <laughs> if they reveal the secrets. What, of what if? Yeah. What if they're like, we can't say that. No. 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 Yeah. You hear gonna... the tick on the phone, the click. Someone's listening, Nash. We can't beat me in the park. Yeah, they get a free ride to Vancouver, and then they revoke their free ride passport. <laughs> and then they're stuck and banned. We have to interview him where his face is just blacked out and his voice has changed. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all do the same impersonation. We got on the ferry. We all jumped on the same impression, and it's clearly <laughs> We ignored the rule of ignoring the first thing you think of, and we all just jumped onto the same farm. We were nothing but hacks. <laughs> Not disagreeing. Uh, hacks, hacks, just ignoring our wives while we're doing this. <laughs> they, they appreciate it. They need the time away from us. Yeah. I do get that question. Uh, are you going to go podcast or what? Can you <laughs> podcast soon? I would really like if you podcast twice as much. Yeah, yeah I'm going to podcast with uh, this guy at my work, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, my my son, uh, he micromanages me whenever I make tea, and it's pissing me off. <laughs> I burnt myself the other day because he wants to do everything to make the tea, but the, like he, it's 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 like highly caffeinated tea we get the high highest caffeine for your for your three-year-old son that is yeah. child abuse we throw in some caffeine pills um it's mm. herbal tea and he wants to be part of it and like if i do it wrong he, he's on me like so fast I, and I, I don't mean this in a in a, an offensive way or anything elliot but you look like a kind of guy who could fuck up a pot of tea pretty bad <laughs> like you, yeah. just, you just fall you look like somebody just is really weak and kind of falls asleep <laughs> <laughs> does that does he just pour the pour the boiling water into the cup and then nine minutes later add the tea bag is that yeah, he's gonna sleep through the uh the tea alarm it, so it's over steeped is he good at making tea then he's getting there he's getting there but uh we we dumped a whole french press of coffee on the floor the other day and i've mm-hmm. never been i i was having a rough morning we made the coffee we dumped the French press. It like poured off the counter, just coffee grounds over the entire floor. And I'm just sitting there like, I'm so sad. And then burnt. He, I saved him. Thank God. But Do you, do you rage? Do you get that, uh, that anger when yeah, stuff like that happens? Uh, Elliot does for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not he in this situation. Cause I was more worried. I was more worried than anger, but like, 
I did swear. I was like, fuck. I, uh, one time I, I spent all day making this stew, this really wonderful stew. And, uh, I think we had a little bowl and then I went to go put it away in the fridge and it tipped over in the fridge and, and, and w- like it was on the top <laughs> shelf and it poured down into every single one of the drawers. <laughs> and then we have a second drawer thing and it, it got into that. Oh my so God. not only was the the four hours making the stew completely shot, then I had to spend the next two hours cleaning out the fridge. Um, and I, I was I was I was like, oh, I should just I understand I should just kill myself. I understand <laughs> I, I don't want to deal with this at all. I feel like that's you, the you worst. Could throw the fridge out. Like at that point, you're just not only is the stew ruined, but the fridge is fuck this fridge and just wheel it out and dump it in the. Like right I had there. to take out the drawers to clean oh, the drawers yeah. and then clean the drawer like cubby. I used to. Uh, Does it used still to smell stuff. like stew? <laughs> it's still you still get a whiff of stew. Every time I can't eat that stew now without having flashbacks. Were you able to save any of the stew, or it was just there was like a scoop, bowl? Scoop it out of the fridge, just like. Wee! <laughs> yeah. Slightly <laughs> sobbing. Squeegee it out. Um. Yeah, I used to be subject to a lot of a lot of rage. I break a lot of inanimate objects that didn't work. Well, I've, never bro- be- I've never broken an object. What do you do? You threw it. Yeah, you just you you whatever it is, a phone or or something like that. You go, what's wrong with this thing? It doesn't work, and then just <laughs> smash it. <laughs> and then after a while, you realize you're like, oh, I'm just gonna have to. It wasn't plugged in, and now I have to <laughs> buy a new thing so you just like it's not good to break stuff that doesn't What's work the most because e- it might come back to haunt you yeah yeah pretty quickly oh yeah yeah and then you're like <laughs> then the- you're out 70 80 100 bucks whatever what's the most expensive that's that's a 7-eleven phone right you just yeah. got like a burner <laughs> when you were selling pot to high school kids <laughs> page me that's my pager number <laughs> tyler didn't pay up fuck <laughs> uh what's the most expensive thing you broke out of rage my marriage a... um <laughs> <laughs> the uh probably probably a laptop like just not not realizing you could take it to the shop and then there's computer guys who'll fix it <laughs> for you and then and then salvage all your stuff that you were didn't send to another like like whatever external hard drive or save save in the cloud and just i mean literally just pick it up and just throw it on the ground and just go this fucking thing like spend about 15 minutes trying to figure out what's wrong and then just fuck oh, good God damn it. <laughs> did you really break a whole laptop yeah that's awesome yeah how old are you uh, uh 38 <laughs> okay <laughs> but i'm so i 20 years ago okay yeah I didn't know they had laptops back then. <laughs> you probably broke the table with that old it was, laptop. It was, the, it was the first laptop. It, it yeah, was. a desktop. That's what I, a desktop computer. Yeah, that's um, yeah, I have some rage problems. Mm-hmm. I think I've dialed it in a lot these yeah. last several years. One time, can you, can you come um, down okay, wait. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, one time we were me and some friends were staying at like a hotel, and you know how like we had the two rooms beside them, and then they had the center room in between. Mm-hmm. And so we were all in one room, and the other room, uh, all of our keys for the room were in the other room, mm-hmm. like that. And uh, they, one of the friends locked the middle door, and I just like, <laughs> I we like, uh, I had like this like the the key. What did I have in my pan? Like a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. And I chucked it. I was so mad that we couldn't get back into the room that I chucked the piece of paper as hard as I could. And it just like fluttered in the air and like was so lame and just fluttered to the ground. And I was like, I looked like such a big, the biggest idiot of all time. That would like, be the perfect metaphor for, for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so anticlimactic. Did the paper yeah. just say why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a imp- impotent rage. So then you just went down to the desk and they just let you in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was fine. Yeah. It's kind of funny when that when you do have rage and it's like in that moment there's nothing that else matters and it's like you're kind of irrational. You can't get out of it. 
yeah you gotta you gotta physically leave the space and put your head in a pillow and just let it pass or there's that or it does it does feel good there's a certain amount of satisfaction in in breaking stuff though it's the <laughs> it's the it's the after effect where you're like oh i've got to like clean this or i've got to go buy a new whatever it is like if you you know your your stew incident uh would have been very satisfying to then just break your entire tip, fridge <laughs> tip your fridge over like it was a vending machine that was holding on to your can of coke and just and just that's the saddest, that was the saddest part about that because i wanted to but then you realize you feel the rage you the reaction you you feel but then you like stop and then you realize like that won't help and then there's nothing to do just sol- sol- start sol- cleaning solemnly it would be fun to go like to like Send path to like value village like a thrift store take like a 20 you know okay well all right slow it's down here, slow down here like, yeah. i know it's a pandemic but like maybe a 10 dollar i don't know. take back you your for, empty you forget- e- Take back your empty bubbly waters and then take that money and buy a bunch of like crap from the thrift store and just smash it. Yeah. Well, there is a, there's those rooms, those, those smash rooms. What? You see those? Oh, you fuck. Very popular in Japan. Um, where you just pay 100, 200 bucks and then just fill a hotel room with like crap you can break and you can do whatever you want in the room. You get a pair of glasses to protect your eyes and then you, <laughs> then you get a baseball bat and you just go nuts. That is a that is amazing. That sounds like uh, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> they trash hotel rooms, and then there was one uh, one of the guys uh, who was working at the hotel came into the trashed hotel rooms like fuck. And John Bonham, the drummer, was like, oh, "Are you upset? You know, you've got to clean this. Don't worry, we'll pay for it." He's like, "No, I'm just fucking mad that you guys get to do this. Smash up hotel rooms." pay for it no big deal and i never will have that privilege and john bonham was like tell you what buddy smash up that hotel room over there and send us the bill the guy's like great and they just paid like a ten thousand dollar bill so the worker could destroy hotel room it's like awesome. that but is love they could <laughs> but the funny thing is they, they would never be able to replace the stuff because it's all like one-time buys so it's just yeah, we, like, bought, we bought this in, we bought these lamps in bulk and we only bought <laughs> So the new room would just be totally different. You just have like, why is that room like all teal? It's all mismatched. Anyways, Can we pull that is- clip from this podcast? Why is this room all <laughs> teal? Good think of something. Help me out, for God's sake. <laughs> I, w- I want. I'm going to book a teal smash room. Yeah. If that's what they're called, I don't. The teal room. Just get a smash mouth. <laughs> That's the only place Smash Mouth in there. <laughs> hey now, you're an all star. <laughs> your game on, go, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Nash, that sounds like that would be a good business. Maybe you should drop this uh, drop service coffee <laughs> drop. and start a Smash Mouth, uh, Smash Mouth Smash Room. I mean, I, you're not. The only problem is you're not supposed to get high off your own supply. So it would just be <laughs> me breaking everything. <laughs> Breaking all your canisters of coffee. Yeah. They're too high quality. They will not break. They're very nice. Um yeah, that's in the that's in the that's in the wings. That's in the that's on the list. Got lots of schemes, boys. Lots of schemes. I'm just writing oh, down. Okay, smash well room. Oh yeah, smash room. Good. That'll, <laughs> that'll be helpful. Darren, right yeah, next I, to I, your, wrote uh, down, I wrote down smash room and then get there before Nash. What was the name of your shirt company? Uh, um, Cusp. <laughs> yeah, write that down again. That'll be helpful. <laughs> With two German spots over top of the U. Also yeah. add to, uh, also add to that list. Quit. <laughs> that should be write on the down. top. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Top. That's what the list is called. Just quit. I have I have lots of lists that uh, that are you know subtitled quit of things <laughs> that i was meant to do so i'm way ahead of you yeah okay uh well this has been fun guys yeah this but, has been a good episode <laughs> uh i mean relative to our episodes yes but uh, in the scheme <laughs> of the of the medium in general yes we're getting there it's baby steps yeah we'll baby. put it on 
We'll add it to this is going on the Patreon. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, I think I think well, we got to go one one more in the bank, right? And then we then we can do it in person. That's kind of exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Then then I this will that. take off. That's when this will shoot up. People will be like, "Oh, they're in person. Let's watch. Let's watch this shit." I'm gonna suggest when we meet in person, we do it without our shirts on. It's just an idea. Mm. I'm just spitballing, but I think that's uh, write it down. Write it down, Darren. Good. I think we should all wear suits, like we're like spies. Uh, I'll wear a wear suit. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Take it really serious. I'll rent a suit. Uh... Oh no, it's Evil Elliot. <laughs> What's up, Judge, bitches? He's gonna eat all of his candy in one city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You save your he's, Halloween candy for the day after. No, Fuck he's gonna that. he's gonna Remember trick his little first? sister. He's gonna trick his little sister into all the trading all her good candy. <laughs> <laughs> Take advantage of. <laughs> oh yeah, you want an O Henry? Fuck yeah! You, you you give me a Reese pieces and I'll give you an O Henry. Yeah, he's gonna drink two diet cokes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shotgun bubbly water. Yeah. What else could Evil Elliot do? He could peek at his Christmas presents before uh, <laughs> before Christmas morning. Or Heal he could up the corner. He could peek on this podcast and then <laughs> and then just fizzle like a bubbly I'd, water. I'd have to be going up. Uh, okay. Not necessarily. Uh, thank you guys for uh, listening to this episode of this podcast. Uh, I've been Elliot Ryan, and and you guys have been you. Uh, <laughs> see you guys. Bye. Bye. You guys can say your names. Who are you? It feels not. It doesn't feel natural. That that's Darren. That's Darren. And Darren, you can say my name. Uh, and this name. is Nash. No, we've been. You have to say we've been. We've been here. This was the thing. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Enjoy Bye. your run. <laughs> <laughs>